Today we'll be discussing the topic of uh, tissue regeneration and Dr. Lekti here is with us. He's an expert in tissue regenera uh, regeneration. His team has carried many studies in the regenerative medicine field. Dr. Lekti, can you tell us a little bit about your passion for regener uh, regenerative medicine and how did it all start? How, what inspired you to pursue this field? Well, that's a great question, Carlos. When I was uh Starting my medical career, uh, I was interested in the fetal response to injury premature babies and then doing my research at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, we discovered that uh, the fetal response to wound healing is regenerative or does so without scar. So we, since that discovery, have been using uh, various biomaterials and strategies to promote regenerative healing in a number of tissues. Mm -hmm. And uh, can you tell us a little bit more about uh, your work in the uh, adult versus fetal heart, about the regenerative medicine in that? So we found that early on the fetus can respond to tissue injury or skin injury with a, a scarless repair. Mm -hmm. uh, and we initially said, well, is this something that's unique to the skin or can it be uh, other tissues? And we've shown that in the tendon and in the heart that the, the fetus has a regenerative response to injury, whereas the adult results in scar formation and altered function. Mm -hmm. So why do fetuses heal regeneratively? What are the differences? So one of the central features that we found in our studies using these, these models was that the fetus has a minimal inflammatory response to the injury and so there's less oxidative stress, less, less uh, reactive oxygen species in the wound and whether that wound is a myocardial infarction, a tendon injury or skin injury, that, uh, that, that inflammation tends to promote more inflammation leading to scar formation or altered tissue function. Are you carrying, carrying out any studies to target these differences in the adults? We've looked at various strategies using biomaterials and recently published some uh, papers on strategies to target inflammation and oxidative stress using these novel biomaterials. So, but first we sought to look at air, um, instances of wound healing where it's not regenerative or they don't heal, such as in diabetes. Diabetic patients have wounds that don't heal well and they're associated with an increased inflammatory response. So we first looked at diabetic wounds. Can we alter the inflammation? Can altering the inflammation and oxidative stress promote healing in these wounds? So we, we've termed that fetalization of the adult wound to try and promote regenerative healing in the adult, similar to that which we see in the fetus. And are these uh, therapies, will they be uh, translated into clinical application to benefit patients directly? So that would be the goal. We've currently got an application that we're going to be sending in the next few months to the FDA to get what's called an investigational new drug number so that then we can perform trials in, in human subjects to see if this novel therapeutic can improve healing of diabetic wounds. But we've also looked at other strategies where inflammation and oxidative stress play a role, such as acute lung injury. Mm -hmm. Part of the, the problem with ARDS or respiratory distress syndrome is that there's chronic inflammation that goes on that leads to um, progressive lung failure. In fact, if you get ARDS, there's at least a, there's a 50% mortality despite optimal medical management. So we've shown in some, in some of our models that we can prevent ARDS or reverse ARDS uh, with our therapeutics. We've also used this in other models like colitis where inflammation plays a real role. That's inflammatory bowel disease where, uh, which is a common problem in kids. Interesting. So it's the same therapy that uh, can target different disease state because the common thing between them is inflammation and oxidative stress. Right. Correct. Do you think these uh, regenerative therapies are the future? I think they're part of the future. I think you, you, disease prevention is important. Treating disease once it occurs and minimizing the side effects and complications of disease, mm -hmm. I think are important as well. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Lichty. My pleasure, Carlos.